Hey, what's up everybody? I hope everyone's having a wonderful day. It's good to be back to make videos for y'all. And I love sharing the Word of God because the Word of God needs to be preached. Especially in the nation we live in and the world we live in. Because God has a plan for everyone. It doesn't matter what color you are. It doesn't matter what you believe in. It doesn't matter what you worship that his blood will wash all sin and he will work in your heart. That's the God we serve. A God who's willing to love you and change your life. A God who's willing to give you a new path. A narrow path. A path that he will always make straight, right, perfect. But the sin will be there. Satan will be there to attack and try to get you back to your wicked paths. And uh, this, these past three weeks have uh, been very, very, very hard for me. Very hard. And the enemy has been attacking as much as he can. Throwing temptations at me and throwing persecution at me. You know, uh, I wasn't getting such a good grade in math and I was worrying about that. And just a lot of things being hit on my mind and on my soul and my heart and then... And I started to lose my faith a little bit in God. And let me tell you that what I'm going to be sharing with y'all today in God's Word touched my heart yesterday. And uh, God, I actually never read the chapter, but you brought it up. Holy Spirit was speak to me, speaking to me. And I was thinking about it. I was thinking about it during Noah's time. That Noah and his family were the only ones that believed in Jesus. No one else. And how the enemy attacked him. Not build the ark. And how, how, how all the other people that didn't believe attacked him. But he put his trust in Jesus and had strong faith. In God delivered him. That is a God we serve. No matter how bad it gets. Strong. So I ask that y'all pray for me. You know, I'm glad that my faith has gotten really strong. And I was starting to lose my faith a little bit. I started not to, you know, to, to post my videos and share God's word because people needed it. I started not to read God's word every day. I was reading it, but I was starting to become more of myself and less of him again and let me tell you don't give up stay strong humble yourself today so before we get started I ask that all of y'all pray with me and I hope y'all are doing great if you have any questions to ask them just ask me because I'm going to tell you what, just just because I preach on this channel and I share God's word with y'all doesn't mean I struggle myself. I do. I struggle myself too. And I know y'all are struggling too. But let me tell you that Jesus Christ has a better plan for you. He, he has a better plan for me. And he, he was telling me there during that time when I was struggling, no matter how bad it gets, I will deliver you. And you know, uh, I think... I think a lot of us need to hear this message. And it's not only just about believing in Jesus, but it's about being committed. It's about being surrendered. It's about loving Jesus. It's about turning from our sins and turning to his righteousness. Staying away from our prideful, wicked hearts and turning to him and letting God take over our heart, our mind, and our soul. The way we say things. The way we view things. The way we act. The way we think. The way truly serve so let's do that today let's open our heart to God's word but before we get started let's pray over this word because we all need it Lord Jesus I thank you for your mercy I thank you for your grace I thank you for your word help us to put our trust in you even if it gets bad because Lord you promised us that even though you're going to give us the power to overcome and cast out demons and to do things, Lord, you told us it's going to be hard. It's going to be difficult. 
because Lord you say we're no longer a part of the world but we're a part of the kingdom of God because we serve one God only but we serve a living God not a dead God Lord we know that you say that the world is dead filled with sin filled with hate Lord you're filled with love Lord help us to be the light no darkness in us Help us to let the Holy Spirit take them. Lord, sometimes we're going to feel alone, but Lord, help us to know that you're right there, that we're never alone. Forgive us. We deserve hell and judgment. Lord, I ask that you work in hearts here today that are not saved. Maybe drift. Lord, help them to understand that your proof is everywhere and that you are willing to change you are willing to get rid of evil. In Jesus' name I pray, Lord. Amen. That's the awesome thing about God. He gives you the privilege to go throughout the world and preach the word of God. Set an example. Rather, rather be a child of God serving set an example than to me living in the world and trying to be the best but never finding happiness because I'm going to tell you what God has greater and he will give you greater if you're willing to be committed surrendering your heart to him and your life because he will use you and he will love and protect you so I ask all of y'all if you can we're going to go back to the front today in the beginning Genesis a very good book. But to all of y'all, if you can, I want y'all to turn to Genesis chapter 6. We're only going to be reading from verse 1 to verse to verse 5. And God was speaking to me um, yesterday during during Sunday and, and, and what Anthony was preaching about, which is my pastor from my church, he was preaching about how we not only should believe but we should be committed to God that we need to be surrendered to God and joyful through him and if we expect to set an example we have to be willing to be committed on the outside and the inside because the sad thing is that most follow, most Christians who profess the name of Jesus Christ who say they believe in Jesus Christ they look good on the outside but in the inside they're wolves and they're, they're not surrendered walk in church and look like they're best, the best Christians that ever lived. But in the other six days they live for themselves. That is not what God is looking for. He's looking for the hearts that are being faithful all the time. Hearts that are surrendered when nobody's watching. That is what he's looking for. Turn with me. And let's read God's word. Because this is the word that will strengthen us. But here you go. If you read, and I hope all of y'all are doing great. I hope everything in your family is doing great. And if you ever have any questions, ask me in the comments. I'll pray for you. Because I'm going to tell you what, whatever you're going through, prayer is one of the most important things. Make sure you do that. Like, talk to God, y'all. God is not going to sit there and ignore you. Talk to Him. Love upon Him and, and put your trust in Him that He will help you. And I, I know sometimes it feels like that God is not there, but He's there. He's testing you. He wants to change you. And here you go. Let's start off in, in Genesis chapter 6. with, And then the title says, Man's Wickedness. And it says, and it came to pass that when men began and multiplied in the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them, the sons of God saw their daughters of men that they were fair. They looked to them the wise of all which say choose. And the Lord said, and my spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be hundreds and twenty years. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, 
the sons of God came unto us, the daughters of men, and they have been children to which the same became mighty men, which were of the old men of renewed. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of thoughts of his heart was only evil continuously. And it repents of the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man without. I am created from the face of the earth, both men and beast, and the creeping things and the fowls of the air, for he repented me that I have made them. So I actually read to verse 7. So what is God talking about? He's talking about man's wickedness here. We see that the it started off really good in verse 1 and verse 2. Let's go back to that. It started off really good. And it says, It came to pass that when man began to multiply on the face of the earth, that here you go, the earth is multiplying. People are being born. The, the world is popular. And God is happy of that. He, he sees that his, what he created and what he brought these people into, that he has a plan for them. Now I want you to think about this. Listen to this real quick. God knows the future. He knows if you're going to accept him or not. He knows if you're going to be written in the book of life or not. But he still will love you even if you don't. He'll bring you into the world and still have a plan with you. Even if you never accept him, he still has a plan for you. You know, I was being asked a question in school about God today. They say, well, 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 why do people go to hell for not believing in God? Why do they have to believe in God? And I told him and I said, look, God created everything in the entire world. He created everything to be perfect and loving. But he also gave us the free will to choose good and evil, to choose him or not, to, ch to choose perfection, to choose him and not even having the thought of evil. But we chose evil. God is a loving God. But God is also a just God. God is not going to let evil overcome his kingdom. Because God is loving. He's perfect. He's never wrong. He's all-knowing. And he's never of darkness. I was reading in in 1st John chapter 1 today and it says there is no darkness at all in God Almighty none at all there is none in him all that is in him is love mercy and that's all of him but let me tell you there's nowhere else if you never accept Jesus Christ as your Savior and if you're never washed in the blood you cannot have a personal relationship with God or go to heaven because you have not been forgiven and washed in perfection that is the answer God wants you he doesn't want you to go to hell he God can't send you to hell you send yourself and he's asking you and he's knocking on the door every day he's sitting there knocking it says I love you I will change your life so here you go we're reading in verse 1 and 2 populating the world's populating and this is during Noah's time it's it's going crazy and here you go Noah and his family are the ones that are serving God they're faithful they're going to listen to God but I want y'all to listen to what the change happens when God is telling what God is telling us here. And if we read in verse 3, it says, And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man. He says, His spirit is not always just. It's not always vengeful. His spirit is loving. He wants to have love with them. He wants to have love with a sinner. That sin needs to be forgiven. He wants to have love with you today that are listening and the ones that are around the world he he wants a relationship with you but he cannot have a relationship with you if you're filled with unrighteousness because God is righteous and he will only be righteous that is who God is he's gonna stay who he is he's not gonna change for you or me but we need to change today don't we we should be saying amen to that we need to change 
our way of life. What is God telling us here? He says he's not always striving with man. And then we keep reading. He says, for that he is also flesh, yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. That he's going to make our years long on this earth. That even though we're flesh, we're going to have long years during this time. Now I want you to think about this. When we sinned against God, God promised us that we will die at some point. He never promised us we'll die right away, but we will die. Now you look at Abraham and you look at um you look at Isaac and you look at Adam and Eve, they lived for thousands of years. And every every year that went by the, the time started to go shorter and shorter and shorter. And then it stopped around one hundred years. Around there or even younger. But here you go. God is even telling them that they're gonna live even longer than a hundred years. And if we keep reading, it says in verse 4, it says, There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came into, unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them. The same became, and here you go, God is just blessing them. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of thoughts of his heart was only evil. Only evil, he says. So here you go. Noah and his family, I want you to think about this. The world is very populated at this point. Very populated during this time. And Noah and his family are the only ones that believe and are committed to God. And this is what it's like to be a Christian. This is what it's like, and this is what it's going to feel like, that you're going to be the only one serving God around you. But let me tell you, that's a blessing. Because God puts you there to set an example, to be the light in the darkness. That's a lot of times what I feel like in life. That's what a lot of times that y'all are listening tonight, you feel like that you're the only one serving Jesus Christ. And and you're like, what is the point to serve Jesus? What is the what is the point to serve Jesus Christ if I'm the only one that believes? What is the point to serve a living God if I if I'm the only one setting an example and that everyone else just is living for themselves and, and it has evil and wicked? And let me tell you, it says very few. God says, very few would he enter the kingdom of heaven. Very few find the narrow path. But let me tell you, God is telling us in here in Genesis chapter 6, and even if it's the Old Testament, it's still powerful. God's telling us here in Genesis chapter 6 that you will be alone and you will feel like it, but he is there and he will deliver you and use you to bring more souls so that you will not be as alone. Start setting an example instead of bickering and complaining. Because I'm going to tell you that sometimes we need to stop complaining about what's going on in the world and that not many people believe. Instead, we should be rejoicing that we are saved and we're washed in the blood and that we are able to preach the word of God. And go to church on Sunday and read his word. Set an example. So here you go. God's telling Noah and his family to build the ark. Think about it. He's telling, he's telling Noah to build a whole big boat during this time. And here you go. He got all the world upon him. Attacking him for his beliefs. Attacking him for believing in the truth. And here you go. But God says, if, you, if you're, if you're going to be obedient, if you build the boat, I'm going to bless you. And he was the only family to survive the flood. Not only that, he blessed them with family to repopulate the world after the flood. So let me tell you, even though you feel alone today and feel like you're the only one serving Jesus Christ, if you are willing to be obedient and committed to him, he will bless you and use you to change.
change souls and win souls for Christ. And if we keep reading, verse 6, and it says, And it repented of the Lord that he had made a man on earth. But I want you all to listen to what God says here. And it grieved him at his heart. God was sad. And I want you to think about it. How can a living, perfect God be sad? He was sad. That Noah was, the, his family was the only one to believe. And that's, that's sometimes what we feel like, right? That we get sad and we're grieved in our heart that the ones around us or all of them around us don't serve Jesus and are false prophets. And that's sad. But let me tell you, God is going to deliver the righteous. Even if you're alone, it doesn't matter how bad it gets, He is there. God is never going to change or never forsake you. So let's do that today. Even though we might be sad, remember, he will deliver the committed ones. And I want y'all to be praying for the ones that are lost. To love upon them and set an example. So that one day they may understand as well and join you as a sister or brother in Christ. And God will reward you for that. So let's pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you for the message that we learned today. That no matter how alone we are, you will deliver us that it is a blessing that you will use us to bring those people to you. Lord, help us to love to be more of you and less of ourselves. I pray, Lord, that we do more wins, uh, soul winning than, than arguing. We do more soul winning than, than weeping and complaining. Because, Lord, souls are out there thirsting and thirsting for something. Jesus is the true answer. In Jesus' name I pray, Lord. Work in the hearts that are listening. Work in me. Work in the ones around us. Amen. God bless y'all. I thank you for watching. I know it's hard. I feel like you're the only one serving God. But let me tell you, you're not alone. God is right there. There for you. Be committed to what he says. And I'm telling you, if you do be committed, he's not only going to bless you, but he's going to bless the ones around you, around you that you might even touch someone's heart and that you might have somebody that accepts Jesus. So the more you trust and the more you have faith in God, it might touch somebody else. Let's do that. God tells us to trust in Him with all our heart and we not in our own understanding. And always acknowledge Him and He shall direct our paths. Remember, be not into your own accords, feeling alone, using your faith and trust in Him. God bless y'all. Thank you for watching. Serve Jesus more than anything.